in order to develop a solid instructional strategy that includes technology integration, you should be familiar with different learning theories. It has been shown that any instructional strategy based on a learning theory enhances student learning, motivation, and achievement. Let's look at a couple of major theories, as well as how technology fits in with these theories. The constructivist learning theory is based on the premise that we construct our own understanding and learning based on our experiences. According to Piaget, one of the leading constructivist theorists, we develop schemas, which are mental models that we use to make sense of our experiences. When we learn, we modify our schemas to accommodate our new experiences. Furthermore, constructivists believe that students learn and understand concepts by actively participating, exploring, inquiring, and analyzing problems. It's easy to see that constructivism ties in nicely with active learning and, more specifically, discovery-based learning. Constructivism is based on two major points. Students learn in different ways depending upon their experiences and they learn by being engaged in a variety of activities. So how does technology fit in with both of these points? First, educational technology addresses each individual schema by making so many different tools available. These tools can reach different students with diverse learning styles. For example, more artistic students could learn from paint programs or graphics programs while more mathematical students might be reached using spreadsheets and problem-solving software. Technology addresses the second point, learning by being actively engaged in activities, by making it possible for students to complete a wide variety of activities while learning about a single topic. Such variety reinforces learning, as well as makes it more enjoyable and motivational for students. This kind of variety in learning is easy with today's technology. For example, students can research dinosaurs in the library and on the web. Then they can write a quick report using a word processor application. All of the research can be combined and presented in one multimedia presentation that might include drawings of dinosaurs created using a paint program. There's another theory of learning that we'd like to discuss, but before we do, let's test your knowledge about the constructivist theory. Answer this quick question, and when you're finished, you can check your answer using the button provided. Then you can click Next to learn more about learning theory and technology. Another major learning theory is behaviorism. Instead of focusing on the mental processes that constructivism bases its theory on, behaviorism focuses on objectively observable or external behaviors. To behaviorists, learning is simply the acquisition of new behavior through a process called conditioning. Let's explore one type of conditioning and how technology can be used as an aid. Behavioral, or operant conditioning, refers to learning that results from a response to a stimulus. B.F. Skinner developed this theory of learning, believing that individuals base their behavior on the positive reinforcement given to them. In other words, operant conditioning works on a feedback system. Desired responses become more probable as rewards are given. Can you see how technology fits into behaviorism? There are several educational programs that are based on the behavioral theory of learning. They give positive reinforcement when a desired behavior occurs and negative reinforcement when an undesired behavior occurs. For example, in an online or CD training activity, students can be provided with positive verbal feedback as well as visual feedback when they make the correct move or provide the correct answer. The positive feedback is highly motivational. 
In fact, research has shown that positive reinforcement is more effective than negative reinforcement. Finally, it has been shown that people learn better in chunks. The chunking theory of learning is applied through online training such as this lesson. Breaking information into manageable chunks results in higher retention. You could also chunk learning by creating activity centers for rotating groups of students, with each center teaching them a little about the same topic. For instance, you could have a computer center where they use the web to research the solar system, an art center where they build Play-Doh or foam models of planets, and perhaps an audio center where students use headphones to listen to books. We've examined two major theories in learning, as well as how chunking information yields better retention. Additionally, we've looked at how technology comes into play with each of these points. Of course, there are more theories out there, but it's up to you to decide which theory you want to put into practice. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.